because a lot of us are, but there's different ways for you guys to be creative right now. So what are you working on creatively um, right now in quarantine? Uh, so for me, it's so my situation is really interesting. So as an artist, I go through these cycles of um, creating work, performing work, and then teaching. So I was kind of like right at the end of my teaching cycle. So I actually didn't have any um, gigs booked currently. Uh, my next gig wasn't booked until June. Um, so I'm in the process of kind of like fi finishing up some education. So um, like the first obvious thing is study. You know, for me, uh, the first thing I did, you know, pick up a book on music composition, brush up on my skills, you know, pick up books on songwriting and things like that. Um, you know, logging on to, um, you know, different people who have resources for artist development. So for me, it's kind of like a perfect time um, to just do artist development because I think, you know, even in normal times, um, you know, that's a part of the life cycle of being an artist. You have to be able to have time to assess the body of work that you've done, assess the market and how things have changed and everything like that. So I think this is the, the perfect time to just sit down and just, um, you know, do an analysis of your goals and things like that. Um, and then also, um, I'm just getting back into my writing phase. So I'm in the process of writing some new work. Um, and also networking. Like, I can't tell you how helpful it has been to just be on Instagram and, um, you know, connect with different people, uh, such as yourself, just being able to, like, search hashtags for, like, open mics, um, music producers or anything like that because everybody is on Instagram right now. So, you know, if you're in, um, I guess if I bring, I'm in St. Louis, so I've had the opportunity to network with people literally in like Oakland, LA, New York, all within the matter of, you know, an hour span. And so this is the perfect time, you know, all the traffic is online. So it's, yes. like, you know, get in there, um, right. you know, connect with like-minded people, you know, you, you may, get some insight into a new market that you want to get into. You may find that person that has like that missing piece that you never would have thought to look for in your home market. Um, so that's the opportunity right there. Um, even connecting with your local people. Um, you know, I've been on lives with my local market here and I've been able to, you know, find out new things about people that I never would have thought to learn, you know, when I see them in person. So, you know, it's, it's all about how you choose to look at it. You know, you can either look at it as an opportunity for growth or, you know, something new to come out of it or you can be on doom and gloom and you know i choose to look at it as opportunity mm -hmm. there was two questions i don't know if you have insight uh th the first question had to do with he said other other suggested revenue streams okay just how to make more money outside yeah. of music that's pretty much what he's asking that's question number one and then uh can you explain artist development Okay. Yeah. So um, additional revenue streams. So the two obvious ones are streaming, um, which, you know, you really don't make a lot of money for streaming unless you're, you know, like a Beyonce or something like that. But it's still something. And then you're also kind of creating that, um, you know, you're, you're building that infrastructure. So, you know, maybe later down the line, you know, you're not making money now, but you may have more opportunities from streaming. So, you know, uh, put your music up on Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, um, SoundCloud. And then, um, so SoundCloud and Spotify, they just added donation features to their artist pages. So, you know, even if you're not getting in those streaming dollars from plays, you know, somebody may just say, hey, like, I like this artist, I want to support them, and they might may, may drop you, you know, 50 bucks or something like that. Um, and so I know specifically with Spotify, they allow you to connect your cash app, PayPal, and I think Venmo as well. Wow. So you don't even have to have an actual bank account. And, you know, mm -hmm. most of us probably have, like, one of those platforms. So that's an opportunity right there. Um, if you're a writer, like in my case, um, I'm a songwriter, so I can write music for other people who may want to record something. So that's the opportunity right there. Um, as a composer, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people that are filmmakers. So I'm currently in discussion with people who are filmmakers right now to write music for their projects, um, which is kind of tricky because none of them are filming right now. But still, that doesn't mean I can't have those conversations for when things kind of open back up. Or even um, you can write music for um, 
podcasts. Um, like I have people that have their own podcast, so that's a source for income to write music for them. There, um, like music is ubiquitous. Like you don't have to strictly focus on the music industry of being an artist. Everybody needs music, whether it's um, brands that are running advertisements. Um, you know, every brand right now is running an advertisement of this is what we're doing, you know, to survive the pandemic. You know, right there, that's an opportunity for you to get music placements, get sync licenses and things like that. So, um, and then merch, um, you know, some people I know they are, they're they already on their merch game, so it's not really a big deal for them to, like, keep pushing that. Um, but maybe, you know, if you have a logo, just order up some t-shirts or something like that, you know, sell them on Instagram, um, the, the Facebook marketplace. Um, like there is literally no shortage of ideas. Um, you know, you're limited by your own creativity. And then I would add to that. And then I'm just curious what you would say about artist development. I really feel like um, you guys, I love when, when I get DMs and, and then I also don't like when I get DMs and emails because I think a lot of artists and, and I know everybody's kind of online right now please stop emailing people including me please stop emailing people your music links and please don't take this the wrong way okay and and for me and for me I used to I've never done music reviews but there's a cool guy and if you guys want to know his information just send me a DM and I'll forge you him because he does free music reviews every single week and he does it for free. You just have to submit it. So I feel like you guys stop wasting your time sending people, Hey, can you listen to my music? I just want your, I just want your feedback. That stuff doesn't work. Um, I feel like, and I'm going to get to the money part. I just, I just have to say that because I get a lot of spam with that. And then I just have to block you. And then you're like, well, why haven't I heard? Cause it's just like, either you're going to listen or you're not. So if you are trying to get feedback or more exposure, go on Instagram, go on Facebook and do hashtag music reviews, hashtag um, contests or different things like that. Try to find your tribe and then go ahead and submit your music that way. I don't feel like flooding people's DMs with your music is going to be a great way. I feel like if you were trying to get to me and you were saying, oh, I want her to check out my music, you know what I would rather you guys do? You notice I have a YouTube channel, right? I don't have any music on my YouTube channel. All I have is tutorials. No one has ever pitched me, hey, Debbie, I would love on some of your vlogs, on some of your tutorials to do your background music. Mm -hmm. I had one guy pitch me maybe two years ago. He was a um, producer and I promoted him for free because he pitched me and it was great. And for like a month, he was all over our, um, my, my YouTube channel. It was, just a, it was just a barter situation. I was like, I need music. He pitched it. It just made sense. Stuff like that, I know it's not necessarily putting money in your immediate pocket, but mm -hmm. having that resource is, is, is so amazing. So I just feel like just be a little more creative. I understand a lot of people want to get their music out there. They want to be heard and all that good stuff. But just go about it in a way that you would dating. And I always say that because um, you don't just meet a woman and you say, I just want to marry her. You don't meet a guy and you're just like, I want to marry him. You take your time. You get to know them. You, you know, mm -hmm. so I just feel like, a lot of people um because they want it so bad and then they want it so fast that they skip steps just basic steps of getting to know who the person is because if you knew artist hustle you know what i do you know i don't do music reviews so it's just kind of like okay i'll send you that direction but just please you guys i'm not you know i want to help everyone but i just want to put that out there but what i'll say is this um you guys outside of music because what what um what he was saying was really really helpful but i do think that there are other skills danny mentioned a lot so hopefully you guys will go ahead and follow him and everything he has going on but i think it's okay to develop skills outside of music because i know a lot of dope uh artists that are photographers but they also do real estate and they also do accounting some of them are doing you know boring jobs but you can turn that into a side hustle right now on the internet or whatever you can do affiliate marketing you can learn how to create websites you there's so many different skills that no matter whether this virus stays for the rest of the year with god i hope it doesn't happen but you got to develop skills that i can do it from anywhere even mm -hmm. if the, the government shut down the world is shut down people still need this skill and music is great but I do want you guys to start to think outside of the box with music. Um, so even for me, I had to develop skills that um, because I do I do digital marketing 
um, for different small business owners here locally in the DMV area. And business has been going because people still need that. Like they still need graphics. They still need websites. They still need so many different things. So just think outside of the element. If you guys need help with that, go ahead and slide in my DM. I don't care. You can slide in my DM. I'll definitely get back into you guys. But just start to think about, hey, maybe I can, you know, just do something um, outside of just, you know, freaking out and being like, okay, how do I do this? How do I just learn some new skills? I love the fact that you said this is the time to study. This is the time to be on Udemy or, you know, get some certifications. Mm -hmm. Just get something, something that will make you more marketable in the marketplace. And you can tie back to your music. You don't have to be two different dimensions. Like you can be multi-dimensional. So um, what is your opinion about artist development? Because you mentioned that. So what, what would you say about that? Um, so my opinion about artist development is that um, in order to, to have longevity or to have a career in something, you have to take the time, one, to understand the marketplace that you're in, which, you know, in this context is the music business, but also to to better understand your craft, to, um, you know, get better at what it is that you do. And so, you know, example for me to kind of give you an idea of my curve as an artist. Um, and then so actually, so before like music and poetry, like I had a full life as a photographer, though. So that kind of speaks to, you know, what you were talking about as ha far as having transferable skills. But so for me, um, like I really didn't get seriously into music until probably like about four or five years ago. And so being a little bit older, like I had a better understanding of what that development process was. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I didn't study music in school. So the first thing was, okay, I need to learn music theory. So I started downloading different apps, so picking up different books to actually learn music theory. Um, I already had a background as a poet, um, studied creative writing in school, but I had to understand that writing poetry is different from writing writing songs. You know, there's, there are two different structures. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarity, but at the end of the day, you know, there's a difference between, you know, writing stanzas versus writing, you know, verses, choruses, codas, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the thing that I've learned is with a lot of entry level artists, you know, you you have that initial talent of being a good writer, but now it's like, okay, what genre do I really want to focus on? Do I want to go the pop route? Do I want to go the R and B route? Do I want to go jazz or something like that? And so that's you know a first area of study is like, okay, so what writing styles are used for these specific genres? Um, so I like using Doja Cat as an example. Like that's my guilty pleasure, but she's a dope writer. So, you know, even though she's, you know, kind of like that whole silly personality, if you actually listen to her music, there's an intentional structure between, be, behind all of her music. Um, she literally writes um, her cor choruses first to get you into the song. And then she hits you with the verse. Um, so that's, you know, first basic step of art is development as a musician or a songwriter is actually understanding the structure of the technique behind you know the craft of music um the second thing is performance so whenever i'm getting ready for a show i spend a lot of time specifically looking at performance so i have like my own like microphone and pa system in my house that you know when i'm getting ready for a show i've learned that it's best to practice with the exact same circumstances that you're going to be performing under so if you know that you're going to be performing on a microphone you need to know how to interact with the microphone so if you've ever looked at you know any of the great singers that they know how to play the microphone. You know, if they're doing something that's real intimate, they'll be right up on the microphone so you can get all those vocal dynamics. Or if they're gonna like really like yell and go at it, then you kind of give it a little bit of distance and you kind of get back. So being able to perfect your live performance is, you know, a critical skill that a lot of performing artists really need. Or if you're, um, you know, a producer, being able to understand um, like mixing, mastering, uh, things like that, or maybe you need to understand orchestration um, because it's totally different writing music for like a standard like five piece band versus like writing for an orchestra. So that's an entirely different skill set that some people aren't really aware of. So I think those right. are like some basic things for artist development. Mm -hmm.